Well, hello everyone. Um, thank you for being here. I I will begin by saying that um, I'm not <clears throat> especially skilled at technology, and when I give a talk, it is almost always in person. So I apologize in advance if I mess this up. Um, I will also add that I will not take up the full 30 minutes I'm scheduled for, mainly because I would much rather leave you wanting to hear more than run the risk of boring you. Uh, having said that, I am excited to be here to talk about rabbits, which is one of my favorite, very, very favorite topics. Over the years, as Mickey said, I fostered and adopted seven rabbits, all from Save a Bunny. Uh, I love talking about rabbits so much that I wrote a book about them. And when people ask me about this book, I tell them that it is an affectionate history of nature's most surprising species, because as I was researching it and interviewing archaeologists and biologists, paleontologists, and other experts about rabbits, I discovered a lot of things I'd never heard of. And the more I learned about rabbits, the more remarkable they seemed to me. So I'm going to present 10 of the facts, or maybe a few more, but at least 10 that I found surprising and fascinating, and I hope you do too. All right, fact number one, every domesticated rabbit today is a descendant of the European rabbit. That rabbit's Latin name, Orectologus caniculus, means hair-like digger of underground tunnels because of their fondness for building subterranean homes. They are native to the Iberian Peninsula, which is the southwestern tip of the European continent and was once part of the Roman Empire. Today, the largest country on the peninsula is Spain, which got its name from the Roman word for the nation, Hispania, which was in turn derived from what the ancient Carthaginians called it, Hispania, meaning the land of rabbits, which is how the Spanish refer to their country, Hispania. The Romans loved the European rabbit and brought them to the farthest points of the Roman Empire. This is an ancient fresco painting of a rabbit and four figs that was discovered at Herculaneum, which was one of the cities destroyed by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in the year 79 CE. It's now in the National Archaeological Museum in Naples. The Romans even put rabbits on their coins. On the right here is the backside of a gold coin in honor of Emperor Hadrian, and it shows Hispania as a woman with a rabbit at her feet. You can see the rabbit here. Not to go on too much about the ancient Romans, but some biologists believe that by distributing the European rabbit well beyond their natural range, the Romans may have saved the species from extinction. Over the centuries, sailors from Roman lands carried them so far that eventually the European rabbit was introduced onto every continent but Antarctica. All right, fact number two. Speaking of the Romans, they brought rabbits to England around 1 CE, uh, a thousand years earlier than previously thought. And when I say previously thought, I mean just a few years ago. In 1960, a trench digger accidentally discovered the remains of the largest Roman villa in England. The place is now called the Fishbourne Roman Palace and Gardens, and it's still being excavated and examined today. Here's a photo showing just one part of it. In 1964, archaeologists at the site found what they believe to be uh, the leg bone of a hare, and hares were indigenous to Britain, so they didn't think anything of it. They boxed it up and filed it away with 300,000 other artifacts. This is not the Roman palace, by the way. This is from Raiders of the Lost Ark, but I imagine it's pretty much the same. Uh, fast forward 2000, uh, to 2017, when an archaeologist named Faye Worley came into the Roman palace archives to examine the bones of hares. This is the leg bone unearthed and filed away in 1964, um, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> uh, four decades later, Dr. Worley looked at this little tibia, which fits between the knee and the ankle, and said, I think this might be a rabbit. Uh, the bone was tested, and it not only turned out to be from a rabbit, but was dated to the first century. And what makes me happiest of all is that experts believe this particular rabbit was not a source of food but was a companion animal. Now, the previous theory was that the Normans had brought rabbits to England from France in the 11th century. 
So Dr. Worley demonstrated that the Romans had introduced rabbits into Britain more than a thousand years earlier. And this was all announced in 2019. And that year, the National Heritage Organization, Historic England, ranked her breakthrough as one of the 10 most fascinating archaeological discoveries of the decade. Right, fact number three, the world's largest known rabbit was Neurologus rex. They weighed in at 26 pounds. That's around six times bigger than the average bunny we see today. They roamed the island of Menorca three to five million years ago. At one time, the island was connected to Spain and the rabbits became isolated when Menorca gradually became an island. You can see it uh, to the right marked by the letter A. What is remarkable about this rabbit isn't just their large size, but how different their anatomy was from today's rabbits. They had no predators, so their eyes and ears evolved to be very small and they lost the, uh, the powerful sense of hearing and eyesight that mainland rabbits possess. They also lost their speed since there was no need for them to run from anyone. Unfortunately, they still became extinct. Fact number four, the Easter bunny is rather recent. Other animals, including a hare and a fox, have been symbols of the holiday. The Easter bunny as we know it wasn't introduced until the 19th century. This could be because of a decrease in the hare population and an increase in the rabbit population in England. And this occurred as Easter was becoming a common Victorian holiday, as we can see by the greeting cards of the period, some of which are rather strange. I'll, I'll, I'll share a few more of them. You can see that the Victorians loved to feature rabbits on their Easter cards. Apparently, the more rabbits, the better. I believe this one is meant to illustrate just how well rabbits and chickens can get along. Uh, we really don't know exactly why a gift-giving rabbit is associated with Easter, although there are a number of theories. Uh, one has to do with a goddess named Ostra, who may or may not have had a cult following in ancient Britain and who was supposedly associated with rabbits or hares. The most reliable evidence that we have right now on the existence of Ostra comes from a Benedictine monk named Bede who was something of a historian and wrote briefly about her in the eighth century. He linked Ostra to a spring festival that we now celebrate as Easter, some of us, uh, but he never mentioned her hanging out with rabbits or hares. Uh, regardless, it's easy to see the connection between rabbits and Easter, or, or at least springtime, since they are both associated with fertility, rebirth, abundance, and renewal. Uh, there is clear evidence that rabbits have a long history of being regarded as sacred or magical animals uh, for many cultures around the world. Uh, for example, this is a symbol known as the three rabbits or sometimes the three hares, and versions of this motif have been found on uh, Christian churches, uh, uh, Buddhist temples and monasteries, uh, Jewish gravestones, uh, at least one Hindu medallion, and uh, other ancient sources. All right, fact number five, rabbits can rotate their ears independently, allowing them to monitor two sounds at the same time. So uh, for example, a rabbit can hide their body in the tall grass and rotate their ears up to 270 degrees so they can monitor the sounds of other animals and insects from far away. Uh, there's even anecdotal evidence to suggest that rabbits listen in on the conversations of birds and squirrels who chatter when they feel it's safe to vocalize. And this gives the rabbit important cues uh, about any danger that might be nearby. Incidentally, a rabbit's hearing is very good, but it's not the best in nature. In fact, rabbits are not even in the top 10, which currently consists of bats, cats, dogs, dolphins, elephants, horses, owls, rats, pigeons, and moths. Mods are regarded as having the best hearing of anyone and can even detect the ultrasonic probes of bats who are looking to eat them. All right, fact number six. Mother rabbits can get pregnant again hours after giving birth. Well, this is one way that nature helps rabbit populations flourish. 
but this is my opportunity to remind you to please get your bunnies spayed or neutered. Fact number seven, a rabbit's whiskers vibrate when touched. The whiskers are attached to sensory nerves at the base and they help the rabbits navigate in the dark and measure the width of holes and passageways to make sure they will fit like this rabbit no doubt did when they climbed into this hollow log. Fact number eight, rabbits are born with their eyes sealed shut and remain closed for 10 to 12 days. During this time, they rely on their sense of smell to detect their mother. Even in the womb, rabbits can smell the protective amniotic fluid that surrounds them. And once born, they're able to pick out this odor in their mother so she can nurse them. Fact number nine, there are 32 species of rabbits that we know of. That's because the numbers continue to be revised. For instance, a new species of cottontail rabbit was discovered in South America in 2017, and I have no doubt that we'll see many more species in the future. Last week, I was in touch with the biologist who made this discovery, uh, Luis Rudas at Portland State University. And he told me that he believes there are 20 or 30 species of rabbits just in South America, not the five or six currently recognized. And that he and a colleague are currently working on identifying a new species in Costa Rica. All right, fact number 10, rabbits don't really hop. That is, they don't depend on hopping to get from point A to point B, at least not like true hoppers, such as kangaroos and wallabies, who rely solely on their hind limbs for locomotion. Instead, rabbits have what has been described by biologists as a half-bound gait. Okay, so this is in which their limbs, their hind limbs work in tandem, but their forelimbs land separately. You can see what I'm talking about a little, a little better here. Rabbits might accomplish a couple of hops for short distances, but once they start to travel at any reasonable speed, they use this half bound gait. So those are just some of the facts that I find so surprising and fascinating about rabbits. What is not surprising is how many people admire and love these animals. And I am so grateful to all of you who help them. My thanks to Marcy and Anne and Nikki and everyone else who rescues rabbits and finds loving homes for them. Uh, to veterinarians who take the time to learn how to care for bunnies, which is indeed a specialty. Uh, my thanks to those of you who adopt rabbits and other animals from shelters and rescue groups. So thank you so much. And thanks to all of you for listening to me. I really appreciate your time. Uh, you can find me on social media or at my website. So thank you so much.